Well, hello there, everybody. Welcome to some Star Wars Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast, or as I'm just going to call it from now on, Outcast or Jedi Outcast, whichever you prefer. This is the sequel, or, you know, next game in the series for the Jedi Knight series, which is also called the Dark Forces series. It's a nightmare trying to name this series. Basically, this comes after Mysteries of the Sith. Um came out around i think 2002 and i actually never played this when i was a kid i've said in the past two games that i actually played um dark forces 2 and the expansion but i never played this one um i believe this also came out for the original xbox god help you if you tried beating this game on this i have no idea how you did it um more power to you so god it's it's like 900 degrees outside right now in oregon we have like a heat wave so I have the fan I usually have off in this room, so I'm just like, God, I can just feel the humidity already. Anyways, it's like 80-something in the house, even with the AC on the coldest, but I'm not, I'm not going to complain about that. Anyways, this is Jedi Outcast. It's not my favorite in the series. I actually don't like it very much. Um, I recently played through this a week ago twice. Um, the initial playthrough took me about way too long, and then maybe I, I just kind of blitzed through it on the second one. My opinion kind of lightened on it, and after having sat on it for a little bit to think, okay, let's let's see what I think now. I still really don't like it as much um, as Dark Forces 2. That might be my nostalgia talking, I don't know. But personally for me, it's just not my favorite. I do think it's got some good points and bad points, but as per usual, I'll get into that when we keep playing. So anyways, as like the last couple videos, I have the, you know, the audio turned off for the music. Because it's the stereotypical John Williams soundtrack, I don't really care for it, you know. I, You've heard it a million times, honestly. I think it adds to the charm of the game, kind of, but we'll get into that later. So, anyways, I don't really have any <laughs> crazy nonsense to say about this game. It is pretty, you know, lengthy. It's about the same length as Dark Forces 2. Um, but I, I don't know. But I will play the cutscenes that aren't, you know, the cinematic cutscenes. The ones that are rendered in-game don't actually have audio if you have your music off. So we'll be seeing those, and uh, let's go ahead and get into it. Oh my god, keep it on normal difficulty. Don't even try. This game is already frustrating enough. I don't think it needs to be any harder. It's just oh, too much, man. And here we go. And I'm going to skip this because we all know what it's going to be. I'll explain the story in my own interpretation as we keep playing as well. So, yeah, Star Wars, cool. This is the, uh, the real deal story here. Preparing for final approach. Whatever's causing those transmissions, it's not showing up on any of the sensors. This Imperial outpost looks as abandoned as reported. It's as dead as the rest of Ketchum. Mon Mothma must be getting paranoid. She never used to send pros like us out on blue milk runs like this. Kyle, Jaff, greetings. Mon Mothma, Kyle was just talking about you. No doubt. I bring troubling information about your mission on Kedjin. I hate it when you say troubling. We've managed to decode a small fraction of the transmission we intercepted earlier. And, well, listen for yourselves. I will fire. Jedi? Reborn? We believe this transmission was intended for Galak Faya, the suspected leader of the remnant forces in that sector. It's probably nothing more than a couple of soldiers telling tales around the Glowland. But as you are the only survivors of the Valley of the Jedi incident, I thought it only fair to warn you that this mission may be more dangerous than we originally anticipated. Your objectives, however, remain the same. Find out what you can. Clear out any remnant forces you encounter. So much for the blue milk run. All right, and so we're in the game now. So yeah, I'm gonna basically go through a little bit of what's changed, what hasn't changed. Um, essentially, this game is still very, very similar to Dark Forces 2. It does have its own kind of quirks, however. This is our basic data pad menu. I really, well, we'll get to it. So. <laughs> um, 
We also have a lot of fluff text if you want to scroll through and read all these um, for your weapons, including your inventory and force powers once we get them. And there's a couple of differences here and there that I will point out right now. This game has um, your ammo right here. Um, I mean, it was like that in the original, but your force meter is a little bit more understandable this time. It actually fills and then degrades on this side here. And then, of course, we have our shields and health and, well, you're not as overpowered and cool as you used to be in the old games. Your shields actually cap at 100 now. It's kind of unfortunate, but, you know, it's fine. I'm not going to lose sleep over it. We could also toggle our, you know, view. Look at my beautiful ass. Look at that. Just great posture that Kyle demonstrates here. Oh, I bet it is. Um, so... This is the last time we're ever going to use this weapon as well, so I'm just going to do one thing here because I feel like it's just slightly too loud. I'm going to bump the audio on the voice down just a bit. I hope that really isn't too... That was close. Yeah. I just don't think it's... It's hard to mash these kind of games because it's like normally... I don't know. I do a lot of audio testing, but this is one where I wasn't sure 100% of what I wanted it to be like. But anyways, so right now it's kind of very similar to Dark Forces, um, you know, 2 and Mysteries of the Sith. So there's that. So we do have to kill every single damn one of these stormtroopers, which is kind of a pain in the ass. And if you're wondering, why doesn't Kyle want to use his awesome red cool Jedi abilities? It's because he basically said, no, I ain't gonna do it anymore. So, essentially he just revoked all of his Jedi powers and said, you know what, I'm just gonna be a mercenary. She said tight. Anyways, this is also a new thing to the series. Um, this is a shield booster. It caps at 100, then if you don't need more, it'll just save it and you can come back to it later. Also, this is a not new feature to the series, but you can get an Imperial Officer Supply Card. These are pretty important. Um, if you're ever stuck in this game, that's probably what you're missing, to be honest. Um, there's not very many, you know, instances where they're going to fall off of a cliff in a way that's just awful. And I shouldn't have done that, but you can skip cutscenes hitting the E button, um, or your activate key, whatever it is. For me, it's E. Um, but yeah, you can do that. I have the game kind of mapped very similarly to how I have um, Dark Forces 2 and Mysteries of the Sith mapped. Also, these are new. You can pick these up. Just little blaster racks to hold goodies on them. And, of course, we get some familiar items like back to tanks and you get these cool little Duke Nukem-style cameras. Uh, they are pretty useful if you're playing the game your very first time. Which, oh boy. <laughs> My first playthroughs of this game, uh, way back when I first bought it, actually, I actually stopped playing it because it was so frustrating and I couldn't stand playing it. And I actually had a very, very hard time wanting to replay this because I knew I was going to do a video series of it, but I had to have some commentary for it, obviously. So I had to at least play through it again and then explain why I think it's not as fun as the other games. It's very puzzle-centric. Um, I don't think that's a bad thing, personally, but yeah. It's definitely a very more puzzle-oriented game than the action combat of the other ones, but I don't think that's too bad. But these first couple missions are just kind of an homage to the first game in the series, which I haven't finished yet. Um, it's just very unfriendly to come back to, and I have a lot of stuff I'm doing in the side, so it's a little hard to do. But, um, yeah, basically, we're not going to get a lightsaber or force powers until quite a ways into the beginning of the game. Probably, I'd say, your first time playing, maybe like two or three hours tops. Um, it just depends on how diligent you are with your, your game and... You know, it's 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 not very long, truthfully, but it is definitely a lot longer than Dark Forces 2, which I think turns a lot of players off, personally, but me, I don't know. I don't think it's too bad. Um, I believe this is just a little, yeah, this is a little handy-dandy-mandy room, so we don't need to do that. You can actually shoot this thing, blow it up, and then that... This game is just littered with shit like this. This game is absolutely sadistic. I would say this is the hardest game I've ever played because it's not the hardest, but it's incredibly difficult. Not because the combat's hard, the combat's actually fine. It's just, holy shit man, some of the things this game makes you think of, just to figure out basic puzzles, is just absolutely sadistic. And I'm not trying to say that like a hard game is a bad thing, but difficulty, because the game is unfair or unbalanced, 
that's kind of where it leads to for this. There's a lot of things that you can do to fuck up the game, um, unintentionally. <laughs> There's even a forced stealth section later on that only shows up one time, and it's very, very awful. I don't think it's bad to mix gameplay up, but trust me, man, in, in this kind of a game, you're really... I think that's my big gripe, is I can never get into a rhythm with it, it feels like. Especially in these early couple of chapters, where the game is very start and stop. So, I don't think it's bad, though. It's just... I don't know. There's a lot of stuff in this game I think is very obtuse and very frustrating. Like, this gonk droid. Um, also, one thing this game is different about the past couple games, this kind of leans more on Mysteries of the Sith style, where you don't actually have a morality meter anymore. Um, you basically just do whatever. <laughs> so, the main reason I'm killing those uh, gonk droids, and I might do it later on too, they just make so much noise and they never, ever, ever stop. It's ridiculous, man. But, um, yeah, the lightsaber combat I've talked about before, it's very good in this game. Um, but, yeah, if you play the other games, I'm kind of going off the assumption that if you're watching this, you see me play through the other games in the series. Or you're just curious, I suppose. I don't know. Whatever floats your boat. But, um, yeah, this game is very, very cryptic. It's very obtuse, very just... Oh, God. Once you figure it out, it becomes a lot less tedious to play. But I really do feel like this game struggles when it comes to just getting a rhythm going, you know what I mean? It's kind of like... Games like Hexen 2, I can get a rhythm going in Heretic and Hexen 1. But games like... I mean, I guess maybe it's a byproduct of the games of this time. But I just never feel like I'm ever getting a rhythm going in this game. I always feel like I'm just roadblocked or something changes or just there's always something different so this is our first real puzzle you can see this big ass mumbo jumbo room it's kind of a big deal um you can do this non-linearly which which i appreciate so i do like some of the gameplay additions to this game but the levels are just massive i mean some of the later ones are just awful but i don't think it's terrible i don't think it's the worst game i've ever played but my goodness it's very confusing and a lot of areas are textured very poorly so where they look the same like you can see I'm already getting turned around and I'm not bad at the game either it's just this game looks very similar in the early game but the later levels are a lot less gross I guess <laughs> there's a lot more uh, stuff to look at and things to do so but if you've played the other games in the series a lot of this should be very familiar which is nice because that's something I think is very refreshing about this game. If you play the other ones in the series, everything kind of locks in and you're just like, all right, this makes sense. But there is some drastic changes. Like there's a little bit of a difference between force powers here and there. Nothing too crazy. I mean, some have changed, but when we get into it, we'll get into it, right? So, cool. Now, this puzzle is later on and we can't actually solve it yet because it's, you know, this is uh, a... <laughs> This is a fun game, and it has pretensions of being a game and fun. So, one thing you can do in this is you can basically, you know, wander around aimlessly if you're not careful. And that's something I think is a big problem with it. And it's not like it's... Ooh, I'm getting yelled at by Jan here. Um, yeah, the basic things of this game is there's some parts that you can activate early on, some you can't. And some of the levels end up just being very maze-like because of that. It kind of does remind me a lot of Hexen 2. If you've ever actually finished Hexen 2, which, my god, I haven't because that game, I just... I fall in that same problem, you know? I get that weird, just, this isn't fun. Anyways, Kyle will mention this, that this is the code for the blue thing. We can't actually do anything with this yet, which kind of sucks. But yeah, we can open up these areas for the security. This game is very, like I said, it just reminds me a lot of Hexen 2. It's not like it's a bad thing. I believe Raven Software was the publisher for this. Um, a lot of Raven Software games are basically like that, so... I don't think it's a bad thing, but it's definitely unfriendly if you're not familiar with it. So, yeah, but despite we having that code, we can't actually touch this yet. We still need to get the other ones for it. This is what I mean when I say the game does have a lot of really nice exploration if you're into that sort of a thing but for me a lot of it just comes off as 
mindless wandering around, and it ends up being very bad later on. I'm also going to point out right now, I'm not running any mods, no patches. So everything you're seeing right here is a vanilla game. Um, there is a lot of really cool uh, mods made for this game, as well as Jedi Academy, which I have seen as well. But, um, yeah, I'm not running any mods. There's no extra dismemberment. You can do that. Surprisingly, a lot of it you can do just from the console itself. Like, you can make it so where every time you hit an enemy, it will basically just chop them in half. And you can turn on, like, real lightsaber combat. It's very like robust with what you can do with the console which is pretty cool i must say i like that because i don't know there's something very endearing about like oh god now we gotta get jam over here oh, this is the other problem i hate about the early game is there's a lot of stuff you gotta do like backtracking and it just this is by the way the fastest i'm moving there's, this is as fast as kyle moves in the entire game even when you're a Jedi, this is as fast as you're going to move. And that's something I think really hinders this game a lot. And you may be thinking, oh, what about force speed? That was pretty radical in the last game. Uh, no. It's not how that works in this one. It's actually more akin to bullet time, so... Took you long enough. Oh, fuck now, you. To break that code. Yeah, let's go... Let's go break that code. You see, this is what I mean. It's the stuff like this that just really saps me out of this game, like... I just cleared this area. I gotta go all the way back. It's... I can understand this from a game of its time. This was kinda new, you know? I can see that. I get that. But looking back at it now, it's aged very poorly. Um, and you can also kill Jan if you're not careful, which is hilarious. There's, there's a lot of things you can do, like... Oh no, Luke Skywalker has died and you fail the game. It's just... There's a lot of dumb shit that can happen. It's really fun. So, yeah, this is the last time we really had to interact with Jan again. And my god, look how slow she walks. Everything in this game is just so slow. Now this looks interesting. Yeah, it's Jan booty. That's pretty interesting, I guess. Piece of cake. Yeah, 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 pieces of cake. I'm sure that wouldn't be called that cake in modern Star Wars, though. It would be called, like, special this. crazy yeah. radical cake 25x29. I don't know. So... Either way, uh, there's also little things you can do with the environment in this game. There's like a lot of really cool environmental detail that this game has that I'm, I'm pretty happy with. I think for a game of its time, that's what I had to look at. This had to compete with games like Doom 3, Half-Life 2, it had to compete with like all these other big titles, you know, that were kind of a big deal. And they're still talked about today. I rarely ever see people talk about um, this game. And every time I've looked up reviews for this game, it's always, Oh, it's so great. It's the best in the series. And I'd say it's probably not. I actually don't remember ever finishing Jedi Academy. But it is the sequel to this game as well. And I personally didn't like it very much. I mentioned before, I had a lot of friends that were oddly into it. Um, and this, by the way, just loops back up here. So we don't actually need to be up here. Um, which is an odd thing the game lets you do. I, d I don't know why they... In they intended you to do this, but you can. Also, fall damage is very, very unforgiving in this game. It's just ridiculous. You will take so much damage in this game. Um, even after you get, like, all your Jedi powers, you're still very fragile in terms of, like, what can kill you and what can't. And it's very awful. Like, I mean, I understand. Yeah, you're, you shouldn't be jumping off of, like, skyscrapers and landing with cat-like precision and not dying. But it's still very odd. Also, these little, like, nice touches, like... I, I just have to look at this game in the vacuum of which it came out, you know? It's like, okay, cool. Like, I can actually break the glass. Like, that's pretty neat. I like that. However, I'll get raging into that later, so... Found another code. And there's our second one, and yes, you have to find these. If you don't find these, unless you have the world's best memory ever, which I truly do not, um, you're gonna have a bad time. I just... There's so many things like this in this game where it seems like, okay, it's pretty straightforward until you have to do something like that. And like I said, we can't just mash these codes in and finish the level. It's not going to work that way. And we are going to be doing these uh, level by level for this series as well. Um, because, yeah. And also, uh, yes, Kyle nut-busting Katarn. <laughs> I absolutely love that the healing sounds in this game are just basically Kyle, you know, 
ejaculating or something. It's really funny. I, I know that's not what they intended it to be, I'm pretty sure. But it is quite humorous, and I've seen a lot of people also point this out too. So, it's, it's very common, so... It's something that kind of gives me a little bit of a giggle every time, at least. This is also pretty much fluff. I'm not going to really pay attention to it at all. I don't think you actually need to activate this thing as many times as I did, if at all. There's another part later on in the game where you have to, like, shoot TIE Fighters with this turret section. And my first playthrough, I was thinking, oh, we're totally just going to have, like, you know... I don't know. It's going to be something useful. Like, we're going to come back here and it's going to shoot open a thing. Because I was thinking, this game is absolutely ridiculous in terms of its difficulty. So I, I kind of assumed it. And I kept going back to there. Because I try never to play a game with a walkthrough. Because... If you have to use a walkthrough to a game, it's absolutely just not fun. Also, these are new. These are ammo canisters. You can fill these up. And whatever you don't fill up, I believe, just goes straight into your other weapons as well, once we start getting more of those. I know where I'm going. I know what to do. It's just, this is the... This is the main thing. You want to make sure you're getting as much out of the game as you can, because this game is brutal. I mean, the combat looks pretty easy from what I'm doing right now, but my goodness, if you start making mistakes, it's just like in the uh, the previous games, it's just going to punish you like crazy. So, this part is scripted. It's supposed to happen. Um, there's a lot of scripted stuff in this game, which I, I think is pretty cool. A lot of it was rendered in game, so it's cool. I just can't help but feel like I'm playing Postal 2 every time I look at this game. I don't think they run the same engine, because I believe Postal 2 runs off of the Unreal 4 engine. And oh no, more iconic uh, Star Wars. I feel like we've heard and seen this before. It's probe droids. Yeah, these things don't come up very often in the game, but they are very annoying. Um, especially because we don't have anything really beefy to take care of them yet. But, oh, trust me, we will. Um, eventually you get, like, your lightsaber throw. That's probably one of the best ways to, uh, pretty much just one-shot most droid-type enemies. But, you know, this is, like I said, it's a very familiar feeling to anybody who's played the, uh, previous games in the series. And, uh, I quite like it, so we can't actually go that way. I just wanted to get those goodies. Um, and this is where the game starts saying, hey, you should really just start trying to think outside the box. Because you're totally going to guess that this is going to, you know, it's going to let you do that. So, yeah. And there's, there's a lot more weapons added to this game, which kind of sucks because, personally, I've not done, like, a all-blasters playthrough of it. But I'm sure you can. I don't see why you'd want to, though. Especially when the lightsaber and force abilities are just absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> like... They're just so much better than they were in previous games, personally. And I think that that's, that's the one thing I can commend this game for, is my god, it has awesome lightsaber combat. I don't know if i call it the best, because I personally don't actually like Star Wars that much, as, probably as much as you think I do. But, um, I, I don't know, I'd say as far as, like, lightsaber quote-unquote simulators go, it's very, very accurate and fun. It does have its quirks, and uh, we'll get into that later, but my goodness. When you start getting, uh, like, some good force abilities going, and that's when the game really opens up. Like, you really start to feel like, uh, like the unstoppable force that you could technically be, I suppose. So, yeah. I, I really do enjoy that. Found the last code. I found the last code. But have you found that last damn fourth Chaos Emerald? Honestly, that's the main question. And there's a lot of environmental detail in this game that uh, is pretty cool. Like, some surfaces are, you know, zappy, and some surfaces are like... Like, this one actually hurt me. If this was Dark Forces 2, it would probably just flat out kill me. But, um, yeah, this game does have, like, reflective blaster fire, just like all the other games in the series. So it's... Like I said, it's a very direct sequel. Everything just kind of feels like, I guess, running the numbers, but not in a bad way. And also, my goodness, you will run out of ammo so fast in this game. This is why I'm going to do a little bit of a quick thing before I go into the next level. These first couple levels are just absolutely... Because you're relying 100% on your blaster. So, my god, man. You want to get as much as you can. Like, I can't stress. I have 
I'm not a bad gamer. I like to fancy myself as pretty damn good. You may think of that uh, as you will. But, you know, I, I just feel like this game, you run out of ammo so often, and it's so weird because you'll be 100% on the mark with your accuracy, but the game will just say, uh, no, you didn't hit it. So you may be thinking, oh, cool, we can just punch these in. No, we still have one more thing we got to do, and this is actually implied by this right here. You can see over here, boom. This game does have environmental detailing pretty good but however like I said it's it's very uh, I don't know man sometimes like the straightforward path just doesn't seem like it would make sense because it's so obtuse you're just like oh that'll work sure <laughs> like some parts where you have to like jump out of windows oh man we'll get into that when we get into that there's some serious horse shit in this game that I just do not agree with I think it's absolutely unfriendly. And I would say that about this game being a negative. It's very, very, very un fucking holy shit, I forgot these mini guys spawn. It's very, very unfriendly to a new player. I ah, what the hell. Let's just be a sadistic lunatic. Let's just kill these last two dudes that probably just wanna go home. Well, they're they're Imperial Remnant troops. They're probably not going home to anything. They're probably just like gonna go. I don't know, murder somebody and say, ha 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 ha, I did it. I don't know. See, even Kyle didn't think that joke was funny. So, this is the new addition to the series, is these ridiculous puzzles that they threw in. And I have really bad short-term memory. Um, this is not because I'm a bad person, or like, I suck at life. I just have like, a lot of issues remembering very specific small things. Mainly numbers. I actually... I don't know, my old job I remembered numbers like every single day, so my my perception of things like that is pretty bad. Like I just, I struggle to remember things like that. So, and then we got the blue one. What about that blue one? Alright. I do like this game personally, but I just, oh, I believe this is the weird one. This is the three ball and, okay, we gotta get this in a, mm, I don't think that's the one we want to hit. If you remember these puzzles just by sheer memory. I think you probably should be doing something better because, my god, if you can remember these kinds of puzzles in this kind of a game, you're just a madman, man. And they're not like some of them are very difficult. It's just like, I don't know. Some of them are just awful. Like there's a reactor, actually not a reactor one, it's one where you're trying to open up a, oh god, what is it? It's like a fueling thing. I, yeah, this is the correct one. Is it? Three or four? Yeah, there we go. It's four ballin'. There we go. And then this red one. Um, yeah, there's like one later on that you just have to like guess that, oh, if I look at these things and they all have different numbers and letters on them, then that's what it's gonna be. Like, it's just, oh god, some of the puzzles. But like I said, I'll get into that when we get into that because some of those are just, oh man. And I, I don't mind puzzles in games if they're actually well thought out. Um, but this is the kind of game where they just don't feel like they were thought out. They were just like, uh, let's, let's just throw this in and call it a day. There we go. We got all the codes in now. Boom, boom, boom. And this is the end of the level. Which is kind of jarring. <laughs> Personally, it's weird that it just does that, but that's it.